to JVTV News. Today's story is that Josh is going to be on the field talking to two people with two different political ideologies. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for introducing me. I really appreciate that. Now, let's get to the interview. Okay, so, uh, like I said, there's 12 questions. Um, some of them okay. some of them are two-parters. And then uh, I'm going to try and, uh, as the assignment says, I'm trying to ask some follow-up questions if, um, if it's appropriate. All right? Yeah. Okay, let's get started with the first one. How do you identify your political ideology? Where are you on the political spectrum? I would say I'm uh, progressive, uh, that I am uh, probably a social democrat, or uh, some would jump up, but is pretty uh, left side or even left wing. Yeah. All right. Um, and question number two. Which Canadian political parties, this is uh, for a federal election, um, does your ide ideology most agree with? Well, uh, in the last uh, election, federal election, um, the platform that the New Democratic Party put together, I thought was uh, completely in line with my beliefs. And uh, everything I read in it, I could agree with. And I was so happy uh, with that platform. I thought it was... Uh, masterfully put together and uh, really well thought out and, and uh, something I could really get behind. Uh, so I, I was happy to be a candidate uh, running with that platform uh, uh, behind me. And uh, I believe uh, I'm, well, I'm running, uh, seeking the election, uh, seeking, sorry, the nomination for our writing again. And we'll probably have a nomination meeting in about uh, two months, I'd say. And uh, I think our platform will be pretty similar to what it was then. Although uh, we just had our NDP convention last weekend. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that we changed is that uh, in the last election, we were uh, promoting a $15 minimum wage. And now we're promoting a $20 minimum wage. All right. So uh, I'm going to ask a follow-up question here. So uh, then you could uh, name one thing um, from either this year or last year, uh, one part of the platform of the NDP that you uh, really support or really stands out to you? Well, for me, the I would say there's... I mean, it's a tough choice between the health care and the, uh, the Green New Deal for me. Right. As I got into this uh, as a healthcare professional, uh, because I wanted to improve uh, things in our healthcare system. Right. So uh, that's really important to me. Uh, however, I think that um, the green plan that we have in our platform to make a green economy, to transition uh, out of using fossil fuels and really address the global climate uh, crisis is uh was actually a stronger plan than the green party had and I, I so i was very proud of that and i still am all right okay so we move on to question number three now and um it's going to go like this what issues are more important to you politically and why well i guess i just almost answered that yeah that's really so i'm question. just going to repeat myself <laughs> saying that uh, as being a healthcare professional for 20 years uh 30 years um, I've seen a lot of people fall through the cracks with uh, getting the mental health and addiction uh, treatment that they've needed. And uh, I just feel like Canada is too wealthy of a country for that to happen. And, and you no know, one, when, when, we, when we see the fallout of that, of people not getting the help they need and being homeless and having to commit crimes and, and, uh, and just not able to get the help or falling, losing their jobs or not being able to work or get back to work because they can't get the help that they need. It's just not good for anyone. Right. So uh, it, we just need to, to make it a priority. And it has to be a long-term solution to make sure we have the workers as well as uh, the training to do it. All right. Okay. Uh, question number four. Uh, what is the role of government in society? So it's a bit more broad, but I'll let you have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, 
I think that uh, that one is, uh, it's about the people coming together. I think that's where democratic, even, you could even say uh, monarchies, that people came together and then chose a leader, a king, uh, that could, could lead them and, and give them a government to um, help people live together and move ahead of society and be protected and uh, to, to make it possible for, for people to achieve their goals. All right. Okay, question number five. What is something the government spends too much money on and what is something the government doesn't spend enough money on? So it might be related to the previous questions we've asked. Same answer. Well, uh, the the glaring one for me in, uh, in in the campaign last time and still is around how much money uh, the government spends on um, oil pipelines and oil subsidies. So just billions of dollars to uh, support an industry that basically is a dying industry. They can't even support themselves. People will say, "How are we going to afford dental care for everyone?" When we when compared to what we spend on the oil industry is just nothing. <laughs> okay, so what would be one thing that you say that the government doesn't spend enough money on, though? Right. So for me, that would be around treatment for uh, addictions and mental health. All right. Yeah. All right. Right on. Okay. Question number six: What experiences or people have shaped your political views? I guess, uh, you know, to me, it goes right back to what I learned in Sunday school, that, uh, you know, Jesus told us to be servants and to help each other and to take care of each other. And, you know, if you have a society where it gets so rigged that, you know, that it's always the... You know, it's just almost impossible for regular people to get ahead and take care of themselves. And rich people just keep on getting richer. You know, it, it, charity isn't going to solve the problem. You have to have a government that that takes care of the economy and, and makes it a fair society so that people have opportunities and people have the, the services that we need in order to be healthy and, and be able to live together in a good way. All right. Um, and education. Yes, education is yeah. really important as part of that, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, question number seven. Um, does Canada have enough or are the... Uh, sorry, does, does Canada have enough social programs or are these, the social programs that we have adequate enough and uh, why? I don't know about enough and I don't even know how many there are. There's yeah. probably a lot. <laughs> but I think the idea what I've seen actually a lot of time is a lot of times new programs come about that kind of uh, are band-aids on solutions. And so I think you know the, we have uh, for example a few years back uh, where I work we have a they brought in and, and funded a lot of money for a transition team so that when people are coming out of the hospital, instead of uh, having to wait for a case manager and a doctor and all that kind of thing uh, and, and falling between the cracks out of the hospital, they have a transition team that watches over them for two weeks. But if, on the other hand, if they just had put that money into the main service so that we had enough counselors and case managers to see the people when they got out of the hospital in the first place, you wouldn't need that other team. Right. And, and we have uh, a bunch of specialized uh, services, but a lot of just, I guess, the core services, I feel like, have not been keeping up with the times and keeping up with the population. So the number, like in Tri-Cities, the number of case managers and counselors we have, I think, is probably about, uh, I think we have maybe one or two more than we did like 15 years ago. But the population in that time has at least doubled. Right. Okay, and uh, we're going to go into uh, 
sort of a, I guess, uh, I'm not sure to, <laughs> what kind of question this is, but um, uh, would you support a form of universal basic income, and which I think I put down as about uh, somewhere between $1,000 and $2,000 uh, per month, and why or why not? Well, I, I don't know as much about this issue in it as I could. And I've been trying to learn a little bit more and, and hear a little bit more about it. So I'm not sure uh, about it, but I, I agree that there, uh, I, I like some things about the, the, the thing, but I also ha have some um, concerns about it too. So, yeah. uh, but there are ways to, of, of working that out. One thing that I, I am uh, uh, opposed to being a person um, who comes from uh, a journey of my own recovery from addiction, I don't want any of my tax money to be spent on people that would use that money to overdose and die or get more addicted to drugs. So that, you know, is kind of in a concept of enabling. So if that money could be used, though, to house people or to give them food or give them food vouchers or give them ways to spend money in that's not on the black market, then I'm in favor. But I, but I'm, I worry about uh, um, killing people with my tax money by uh, causing overdoses. Yeah, yeah, that, that does make sense. <laughs> okay, um, and this is question number nine: uh, Would you support a progressive tax system? Uh, why or why not? Uh, pro a progressive tax system. Yeah, that is. Um, I have it written down as so the taxes. Is, so if, if you're richer, you get taxed more. Basically, the more money you have, oh, the more taxes you get. Yes, that's a. Uh, that's, so definitely, yeah. yeah, that was one of the, uh, another one of the, um, uh, oh gosh, resolutions that we made at the NDP convention last week was to make the richest uh, pay uh, for, for more uh, in their church fair share. In our last platform, we had a 1% wealthy tax on people who had over $20 million of wealth. So, you know, it, it may not seem like much. But if, if you did that, that would pay for everyone have medication, dental care, and it would pay for <laughs> mental health and addiction care too, probably. Right. It would be like $6 billion a year. And for those people who have like over $20 billion of, of wealth, it's nothing. So it's not going to cause them to want to leave the country and that kind of thing. Yeah. Now, will they still try to hide their money? Oh, well, yeah. But, uh, you know, we have to... We have to be able to figure that out and be uh, and, and have a way to track that down. But lots of people, you know, they have their money here. They have their their, their money is in their in their factories and in, in their land and in their uh, in all their properties. So they can't hide that. Right. So uh, would you would you just want to tax the rich, or would you want to have uh, different levels of taxation for different classes? Um, I, you know, to some gradual uh, amount, yeah, I think right now the middle class is, is uh, paying a lot. And I think that uh, I wouldn't want to see people who are uh, kind of right around in the middle uh, being taxed any more than they are. I think mo for most the middle class, we're just getting by as we can. So... We could actually lower taxes probably for the middle class right. if we really started taxing the richest people. And the other part of it was in terms of income tax, of really raising the income tax on those people making like uh, over uh, uh, half a million a year. Right. Okay, question number 10. What do you think about Canada's health care system? And uh, please rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest score. And uh, please give at least one rate, one reason for your rating. So I would say that uh, I would rate it as about um, 
about a six. Right. I think that it's been way underfunded for a number of years. And I think, you know, with COVID, you see that with our long-term care homes. They, uh, you know, the amount of death that happened with COVID and, and how we had to call in the National Guard to staff them, um, and, you know, and the, and the amount of viral spread that was happening in, in them, it just all speaks to that. I know it, it, it's true in mental health care. I, I, uh, I, I think it's kind of crazy that in, in we have health, body, physical health care, it covers everything right up to the back of your throat, but not your teeth. <laughs> right? And then medications, medications were just wasting money. You know, most people like to shop at Costco, right? Because you can buy in, in bulk, right? Yeah. As a company, as a country, for our pharmacare, we buy as provinces or people buy all different ways. So who benefits that? The drug companies benefit by that. Canadians are, are wasting billions of dollars doing that. So it, it's just it's just waste that that uh, that the lobbyists who support the liberals and conservatives have wanted to keep around, and they they keep supporting them to do keep it the way it is. But it's not good for Canadians. It it, it just is spending a lot of our money uh, needlessly. So that's part of the healthcare system too, and and then. But there's good things too, right? I think there, we've had a long history of, uh, of, of good training, of, of good uh, institutions. Um, we draw have a, a beautiful country to live in, so we draw doctors from all over the world who want to come live here and raise their families here and work in our system. Um, they appreciate that they don't have to worry about collecting bills and billing all their uh, their, their patients like they would in the States and other places. So, um, yeah, so we have some really good things about our system. Um, and, and I think, uh, that, that's why I would give it above a five, but, uh, I think, uh, we need to fund it probably, uh, you know, a good, a good chunk more. Yeah. Okay. Question number 11. Um, how much should the government, uh, how, much, or how much control should the government have over guns? Should the government ban certain guns or firearms, if any? Well, yeah, I don't think that people should be able to have an uh, ICBM missile or a rocket launcher or have your own F-15 fighter with its fully armed. Um, tanks, no. Assault rifles, probably not. You know, bazookas, I don't think so. So yes, there is a line, <laughs> you know, and, and you know, yeah, no, no nuclear devices. I don't think they should have those, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, I think uh, you know most people are think, uh, talking about assault weapons or even pistols or the, that kind of thing. I was surprised when I came back to Canada that uh, actually a lot of those things were legal again. I, when I left uh, to move down to Arizona, it wasn't legal, and then uh, it, it's kind of crept back in while we had some conservative leadership, uh, the loosening of gun control here. And so, uh, you know, it's led to some problems. I know our problems aren't as bad in the States, but, you know, does it have to come to that before we do something about it? All right. Okay, and uh, the last question is, um, what is one thing that Prime Minister Trudeau and the Liberals have done right and what is one thing Prime Minister and the Trudeau, sorry, Prime Minister Trudeau and the Liberals have done wrong or could do better? Well, I guess in this COVID crisis, I think that they uh, they did do a good job with the CERB to help people in the economy, although they were basically uh, made to do that by the NDP. And they have done a good job in getting us some vaccines, and it hasn't been that easy. It hasn't gone that well either, but I know there's definitely some challenges there. And one of those challenges is that uh, we don't have a Canadian uh, pharmaceutical company anymore. The Conservatives got rid of it. We had one, and Liberals uh, never get put it back into the power. And they've been back in power for 17 years and haven't set one up again. 
So they protested when the, the conservatives sold it off, even though it was a profitable crown corporation. It was, you know, didn't cost the taxpayers a dime, and then and then never brought it back. So you know, it, that's one thing that they they still could be doing better. Right. Well, that's all the questions I have for today. Try to keep it short. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me in this interview because, um, all well, right. yeah, not only were were you a great uh, candidate for this interview, um, but yeah, it was a it was a good time, and um, I hope you enjoy your uh, golfing experience after in the lovely weather. Thank you, Josh. I hope your project uh, finishes up well. Um, if you uh, want to share what you come up with at the end, I'd uh, be interested to see it. Okay. <laughs> so the first question is, how do you identify your political ideology, and where are you on the political spectrum? Well, those are kind of weird questions because... <laughs> um, uh, how do you identify with your political... How do you identify ideology? your political ideology? Are you well, conservative, you, a liberal... You, you, um, anarchist? Like you do, I guess. Yeah, Grandpa, we're asking about your political ideology. Yeah, I said, my, oh no, you said, how do you identify your political ideology? Okay. Yeah, I'm that's, only one, that's only one question. We're talking, we're talking about you, Grandpa. Okay, well, I would have to say, I am a, see, you can't, <laughs> Politics have changed so much since I was your age that I, uh, uh, I hate to even answer that question because um, I would guess right now I'm probably a, a left-wing conservative or a right-wing liberal. All right. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. All right. Well, we'll move on to the next question. It's a bit easier. Yeah. No, you can write that down. Yeah, I, I wrote it down. Okay, good. Which Canadian political party do you most agree with? <laughs> I mean, how do you answer that question? Because every party has something you agree with, and every party... Well, most. Party. You most agree with. Which party, which party I platform... Say conservative. Okay, there we go. Wow. Okay. Can we move on to the next okay. question? No, I'm going to tell you something first. Okay. When Andrea was going to school, she, she did the same thing. But she had this big long questionnaire, just questions. What would you, you know, do you believe in putting criminals in jail? These kind of questions. And there was a hundred of them, and I took it to work, and I gave it to everybody. And the answers you gave, then you added the points for each question. Yeah. And the answers you gave put you where your political <laughs> beliefs lie. Now, most of the guys I worked with were all NDP, because they're all union guys. Right. But when all was said and done, almost everybody was a liberal. <laughs> because all, but the Liberal Party has changed a lot since then. Anyhow, yeah. go ahead. All right, we're going to go to question number three. And I'm going to ask you, what issues are most important to you politically and why? Uh, number one would be uh, um, the, the economy, I guess you'd call it. Okay. Why is that? Well, because... <laughs> If we don't have people working, or we don't have, um, and you know, if we don't, if the government doesn't get enough money to run the government, regardless of which government it is, things are bad. I mean, we're running 
And right now it's difficult because we have this COVID stuff, but we should we should only spend what we earn, so to speak. Yeah. And the government should do that too, but they don't. So I would have to say economy. And because it's important, for all the other things the government does depends on the economy. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go to question number four. What is the role of government in society? Ah, boy, that's a puffy, I don't know. What's the role of government in society? Well, I guess it goes to uh, maintaining, maintaining, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they have to, well, now you get confused with the American <laughs> Bill of Rights or something. You know, the, something of peace, liberty, and... The, the Constitution? Well... Peace, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, is that... Well, that's, that's the American stuff, but... Yeah, ours, <laughs> ours is similar. I think the role of government is to, to, to treat everybody equally. Um, yeah, to treat everybody equally. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Because if they do that, everybody is, <laughs> you know, the golden rule, treat others as you'd, be, as you'd like to be treated. If right. If we all did that. So. Okay. Okay, so. Yeah, okay. yeah. Question number five. What is something the government spends too much money on? And what is something the government doesn't spend enough money on? Well, the biggest expenditure of government is interest on the debt. That's their biggest spending. But you have to pay it, so I guess. But the other things that they... Oh, boy. What did they spend too much money on? The, Just pick one thing, Grant. That's okay. I'm trying to. But it's, there's too many. What's the Tom Hardy? Uh... I don't know. I really, I really, I have to really think about these questions. You should have sent me them yesterday. Oh. Um, what, was it, what is the thing that they spend too much money on? Well, one thing that you remember recently. It doesn't have to be the most or the, you know. Well, I know, but it's, um, um, <laughs> welfare. Welfare, okay. And what is something they don't spend enough money on? Um, infrastructure. Infrastructure. Okay. Okay, question number six. What experiences or people or, or religious beliefs have shaped your political views? What? I'm sorry, what, what? Say that again. What? What has shaped your political views? Has it has it been uh, religion? Has it been experiences? Has it been people? All of the above. All of the above. Yeah. So you you'd say that Christianity has shaped your political views as well as everyone you've known and met. Yeah, and 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 that, well, it has moral values. You have we have politicians over the years that have been incredibly good at what they did so they they shape you know like churchill for example um so i have to say all of the above okay uh next question does canada have enough social programs um and why if if no why or if yes why we have too many <laughs> uh because there are, they, we have, uh, I guess, do we have enough or, so I, I don't think we have a, we have too many. We have too many. Yeah. Why do you, why would you think that? And I would say that because they're badly administered. Okay, that sounds right. Okay, so the next question I'm going to ask you about um, a policy, sort of, not, not really, it's not, uh, it, 
it's not it's not in place yet, but it's um it's called a uh, universal basic income. So would you support a form of universal basic income, which is every adult in Canada receives um, about one to two thousand one to two thousand dollars per month, and about twelve thousand to twenty four thousand dollars annually from the government um, tax free. No. No. Why? Why not? Because people will stop working. Right. Okay. They're already doing it anyway, so <laughs> just make it worse. Okay. Move on to the next question. That was a great. That was a good answer. That was short and concise. Okay. <laughs> Would you support a progressive tax system, which is um, where people with higher incomes, so like people who are really rich. Um, pay a greater share of their income in taxes. Um, so tax the rich. It's, uh, yeah, I'm still here, Graham. Okay, so. Yeah. I'm turning it, I want to turn it down. Okay. 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 Talk now. Okay. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, stay there again. Okay. So, would you support a progressive tax system, which is where people with higher incomes pay a greater share of their income taxes? So, if you're if you're really rich, then you'll pay, you'll pay much many much more income taxes than someone who is in the um, middle class. No, we're already doing that. That's the way our tax system is designed. Except they don't pay any because they get lawyers and whatever to, too many loopholes or whatever. But anyway, um, I would say because I don't really agree I think everybody should pay ten percent. That's the way I look at it. But anyway. And then if, because most people aren't paying anything and or the rich aren't paying anything and the poor are, are paying too much. So I would say yes to the progressive tax system. Okay. And the next question, question number 10. You don't know, want to know, you don't know, want to know why I'm out. Okay, well, you can explain why. I thought you already did. It's just kind of... Well, yeah. Um, there again, it's poorly administered. <laughs> yes, okay. What do you think about Canada's health care system? Please rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest score, and please give one reason for your rating. Um, I would say 7.5. Okay, why is that? Because, well, you want a reason why I said that? Yeah, just one, you just have to say one reason, Grandpa. Well, or, too or more. Too much bureaucracy. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a good health system, but there's an awful lot of money wasted, and I don't know how you overcome that. Just ask your mom about it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Okay. 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 Next question. How much control should the government have over guns? Should the government ban certain guns, if any? Should, should there be common sense gun laws? And if so, where would you draw the line for firearms in Canada? Um, what, was, what was the beginning of the question? Do well, I believe in guns? Well, how much control should the government have over guns? So, like, should they should you be allowed to have an assault weapon? Should you allowed to be have a hunting well, rifle? They should have... They should have uh, total control, I think, in a sense. Okay. Uh, um, why does anybody need an AK-47 to hunt rabbits, you know? Right. Because they're only designed for people killing people anyway. Okay. But I would say they should have, well, more control, but uh, I guess you have to um, decide. Like, nobody needs a handgun, so they should ban handguns. And, and long rifles for hunting is fine. And, uh, but automatic weapons, no, period. Not even semi-automatics as far as I'm concerned. 
But anyway. Okay, is that it? <laughs> I guess so. Okay, and the last question, and you're gonna, I think you're really gonna like this one. What is one thing Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the Liberals have done right? And what is one thing that Prime Minister Trudeau and the Liberals have done wrong? Well, the first one is nothing, and the second one is everything. <laughs> you really, you really think that? I yeah, I, I have no use for his way of um, doing things. It's just totally. Um, like his old man, and you don't even remember him, obviously, but <laughs> he was he was the worst prime minister this country ever had. Uh, and then the classic example, he brought in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, right? Yeah. So that's allowed everybody in Canada to do whatever they want without any repercussions. But if they had brought in the Charter of Rights and Responsibilities, we'd have a totally different country. But nobody now is responsible for anything they do. Back today, the guy, the guy that went to court to have his mask, he didn't say he could, didn't want to wear a mask. The judge said, "Yeah, okay, you don't have to." And so they, he's throwing that out. So now people don't have to wear masks, right? Right. And they're not responsible for, uh, you know, they could kill people because they're not wearing a mask. Right. Or I could kill them because they're not wearing a mask because I'm still asymptomatic, right? Right. Possibly. Anyway, that's my answer, and I'm not going to change it. Okay. Well, <laughs> that was that was the last. I, I really, I, I really, there are probably some things in both cases, but offhand, I can't think of them. Okay. Well. Who's, who gave you this? Well. Um, about half the questions are mine, and the other half came from the actual assignment, so. That's cool. Yeah. But you don't put my name to it, you just, this is what somebody told you. This is what somebody told me. Because I think this is a very NDP questionnaire, or liberal. <laughs> yeah, well, you, do, do you want to know who the other interviewee was? Yeah, I know, it was John. John Moak. Yeah. Yeah, it will, he, yeah, he's a candidate, so... Yeah, but he, but he was raised in the United States most of his life. Yeah. And so his idea of politics is very stained from, you know, because, you know, you, there was nothing in the United States like in Canada. They don't have any right. rights to speak of. Yeah. They don't have Medicare. They don't have... Uh, you know, that they, they don't even have a right to have a holiday. If your boss says you're gonna work Christmas Day, you gotta work, hmm. or or statutory. I mean, the unions and all that they have, right? But these kind of when you're raised in a country that's totally bereft of freedom, to my mind, they have no idea what it means, but they they praise it all the time. But anyway, I, I would I would be interested to know what he had said, but I'm not going to ask you to tell me um, because. You know, if you would if you would ask um, a Canadian NDP here, I think the answers might have been a little different. Right. Well, there's a lot. Yes, there's a lot of there's a lot of questions about um, social programs and um, stuff like universal basic income and a pro progressive tax system, um, because. Um, some people, some people think of Canada, um, outside of Canada, some people think of Canada as a country with all these social programs, you know, especially in the States, right? People think about Canada's healthcare system. So that's, that's partially why, um, I asked those questions, Grandpa. Well, in our, um, in our healthcare system is not very good compared to the one, say, in Denmark or Norway or Sweden. Right. It's... It's a thousand times better than the American one, and it's probably on a par with the British one or the Australian one. But we're only like number eight in the world or something for that matter. And over the years, when they rate countries, you know, I don't know who does it, the UN or something, Norway, Canada, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand have always been the top five. And uh, we dropped a bit to number eight this year, I understand. 
Yeah, the Americans have never been, they've always been in the low 20s. Right. So, I mean, uh, we're, we're pretty good. You know, I mean, we do have problems and we do have, but for the most part, I mean, I wouldn't want to live in a country that didn't have a medical system. Right. And we do, we do have a progressive tax system. I mean, I don't know where they cut that question from because it starts out, uh, you know, you have to make, I don't know, say $20,000 a year before you pay any tax. And then it's, it's, it's say, it's 20% or something. I don't know what you have to pay. Uh, and then uh, when you make 40%, you have, or $40,000, you, you go up to maybe, you know, another couple of percentage points. So when you're making $100,000 a year, you're paying... Theoretically, you're paying more taxes, but people up in those areas, they hire lawyers and accountants and they get away with murder, so to speak. You know. They change the laws like Paul Martin. Yeah, uh, remember when the liberals were in power under Trudeau the first? Well, no, that was crutching. Uh, Paul Martin was a minister of finance. Paul Martin's family owns uh, a whole bunch of ships, the deep sea ships, the Great Lake ships. I can't remember the name of the company offhand, but so he brought in a law, and most people they all register their ships offshore. They call it so they register them in the Bahamas or in um, in uh, yeah. Panama because they don't tax them, or a very low tax or whatever it is. So he brought in this law that prohibited people from doing that unless they had their ships registered in two countries. I don't remember they were. Panama and where his, and his ships were in one of them, put it that way. Cayman Islands or something. So here we are. The, the Minister of Finance brings in a law banning people from registering because they don't pay tax, and yet he's not doing his own ships that way. <laughs> Raised a big stink for a week or two, and then that was the end of it. So, I mean, that's why people become a little, I guess, callous with politicians, and I don't care what stripe they are. Um, you know, the leader of the NDP, when he got elected, he was praising the communist leader of Venezuela, who starved his people to death and put put Venezuela, an oil producing company, into bankruptcy. And he praised that guy. And then when somebody said something to him, buddy changed his mind. <laughs> hmm. So, I mean, what do you think about, how do you, how do you put these people in a, I'm the only politician that's ever been any good in this country, as far as I'm concerned, was old man Bennett when he took over BC. This, this province was a have-not province. And he turned it around in about five years. You know, they built roads, they built railways, they built, um, they, they just did everything right. And uh, and he was a, he didn't, uh, he was just an honest man. He was just a hardware, he owned a hardware store in Cologne. And, that, and then he became prime premier of BC. And, I mean, he was just a wonderful, person as well as a uh, honest and upright and, and and he got things done i mean it was just amazing we had no roads in bc that you could speak of in fact the fraser canyon when we came out here in 1958 on our honeymoon there were parts of that road that were i don't know yeah it, it's like they were braced underneath by two by four so you wouldn't fall in the fraser canyon I, I'm, I'm not kidding i mean so that's how bad the roads were, and um, so but they they built you know they built all they fixed all the highways that they should have been done up to you know up to standards, and then they extended the uh, was called the Pacific no we had a, well the BC owned a railway and it it ran from Vancouver up to Prince George I think and then they extended it to go further that opened up the north so that they could bring their lumber down easier and all that kind of stuff. And so, um, and I can't remember all of the other things he did, built bridges and, uh, anyway, and kept the taxes low. In fact, he was the one that brought in, uh, 
uh, Medicare in BC and how they paid for it then, they put a 3% sales tax on everything. So everybody that bought anything, except food and kids' clothing, I think it was, paid three cents on the dollar. And that all went in to pay for the medical system. Then over the years, it's been tinkered with. Tinkered, tinkered, tinkered. <laughs> now we're back to the government paying the whole shot, but the, where do they get the money from? They have to take it from somewhere else. Right. So now they're... I think I heard yesterday on the news that most provinces, 50% of their income now goes to Medicare. And I'll bet you 40% of what's, or 50, 40, the other 40% of what's left, or the 40%, goes to education. Right. So the, the, the pittance that's left goes for everything else. And, and that's, I mean, that's just a fact of life, and it's the same every province, but it's getting worse. And what are we going to do? You know, now with all this debt they've rang up, and I can't blame them because of COVID, but um, old man Trudeau put this country in debt, uh, and we never paid it off. It still was there when all this started. Um, the conservatives paid off a lot of it, but then Cretchen built it up a little bit again. But uh, I know my uh, financial advisor at the bank, he has this great big chart on a, on his wall that goes back to 1910 or 1900 or something. It's just graphs, right? Yeah. And, and we haven't been out of debt since Trudeau the first took over. Hmm. <laughs> and now we're... that's your world, Josh. What about yeah. what about um, what about the debt after the uh, World War One? That was all paid off. Yeah. Even World War Two. I'm not quite sure how much the debt was when Trudeau took over, but it, it was either not there. Or very very minimal, right? Because uh, well, nineteen I don't know when he took over fifty sixty. I don't know. I can't remember. Do you want me to, do want me to Google it? Very well through the forties and fifties, or fifties and sixties, I guess. No, it was a liberal government mostly, um, but it was a totally different liberal part. Like the Liberal Party. It, <laughs> It's hard to say, uh, to describe that, but this, to my mind, the liberals have gone to where the NDP used to be, and the NDP has come to where the liberals are, so mm -hmm. they're virtually the same party. Mm -hmm. The conservatives have come, from, gone from where they used to be to where the liberals used to be, with a few little quirks added in, but everything has moved to the left, as so to speak, you know. Yeah. And and so, you know, the government. It's fine to say the government we should have Medicare and child care and all this stuff. Where do you get the money? And especially when you shut down the oil industry, which was paying half taxes in Canada at the time, or recently, or lately, or you know, a few years ago. Um, are, are you? The liberals have brought in these laws that allow you to sell your company to somebody in China. Right. Now, it should have been made law that you could only sell to somebody in Canada. You know, I, now half of our country or more is owned by Chinese and Americans and everybody else in the world. Right. And we keep doing that. And I, you know, that to my mind is just stupid, ludicrous. Right. And anyway, we don't want to get into that. So what are you going to do? Right, type that all out and yeah, submit, submit it to. No, well, I just it's I just have to do um a review of the both interviews and write three separate um short paragraphs um for each oh, interview. Yeah. About, about like oh, well. a thousand to two thousand words total, or well for each interview. That's a lot of words. Mm -hmm. We'll see. You can, just, you can do it all in one word and say, oh, I don't know what the one word would be. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Uh, how, how. All right. Yeah. Anyway. Well, thanks for talking to me. Well, you're more than welcome. How come Ben's not doing it? Uh, because it's not Ben's uh, school assignment, so. Well, how come he phoned and said he wanted to talk to me about this? Huh? Ben, yeah. didn't, ben didn't phone. Well, that's what it says on the phone.
Ben Vanderbilt. It's just, uh, yeah, I'm calling from Ben's phone. Well, there you go. Confusing, <laughs> Max. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you're, well, you can't drive me crazy because I've been there a long time. <laughs> Already. Thank you, Josh. That was very cool.